Hello guys, this is Terry from Geeky Gaming TV. Welcome back to a review for Y Academy episode 24. Are you serious? Heavy metal is only for snakes. Or Jitsu Wa Ka Heavy Dake Day Heavy Metal Te. So this episode was fairly good. I noticed a little bit of I don't want to say bad line art, but it looks like there may still be a little bit of that inconsistency, um, like flowing over since most studios are still working from home to a certain degree. But I'm going to ignore that, but I wanted to point that out before someone else did. Sound quality, it's a little bit better this week compared to last week. Uh, this is by far one of my favorite episodes. I'm currently preparing my, like, the length of it via, like, the reviews and stuff. But, yeah, this, this is, the stylization of everything in this episode. I, I don't want to say it's a good episode because Ronto is in it, but it's a good episode because Ronto is in it. It's also a very good episode because music and sound is the centralized theme of this episode and when you allow your sound design to be the main focus or one of the main focus you really allow your series to kind of grow a little bit perspectively and I'm saying perspectively because sound plays a lot in the role of how perspectives are treated but for this episode we are facing off with Chiak Chiaki Hebiyama as sn Sky Snaker. I almost said s Snake Sky, which is my bad. But we got to hear two really important sounds. Songs, I mean. Heavy Na, or they got Heavy Ni Nadu. And how the. Have a peckle, or they got min o ku. And I will also point out that some of the stuff, sound wise, voice actor or actress wise, I, a lot of their sounds may have been lower quality, but the actual songs and like the background music is what I was referring to that was playing a larger role. Because I know Koma, or Sandayu Koma, poor what the wiki says, the voice actress record, or voice actor, or VA in general recorded the lines from home since the pandemic. Which, I'm not even sure if I can say the word pandemic without YouTube and... Sandra Sharon, who, who, Karen, whoever her name is, the lady that is in charge of all of this, the one that has messed over the entire process of only promoting big channels when tons of little channels exist. But we're ignoring that. We're focusing on Chiaki, or Sky Snaker, which having a heavy metal or a metal like appeal. And having a head similar to that of like a kaiju from Pacific Rim really flows well for the yokai watch world. I really want to point that out. And it's the music being an attack really makes me think of people who made fun of bards back in traditional RPGs. So you have Kingo Benimaru, Shishio and Clock Lady all defeated by music and along with Ronto Ronto got owned as well Miss Shadow was owned as well slightly by the music but it wasn't until we really got to learn a little bit more about how Sky Snaker's body works because he moves more like in a snake-like pattern, which we learn more about later. And we hear Dokumetoru, or Dokumetoru, I 
I, I am botching the Japanese for some reason. It's just been a really weird day and when you see moves like Hyper Beetle, you begin questioning who who's coming up with the move names. Like you begin questioning that process. I, I love the fact that everyone in this club area is dancing and jiving and moving to the beat. Stomping their little feet to the beat to the sound of their own drummers, which is fantastic. And I thought Sky Snaker's little cinematic songscape attack. And I'm saying cinematic songscape because of the whole. It was a monologue. It was singing basically as a monologue. But it was countered by meditation and a rapping flow from Jean Pei because apparently Jean Pei can do a little bit of work on the mic as well. And then the combination of Miss Shadow and Kengo Benimaru led to the, the defeat of Chiaki. And Chiaki and Ronto had a moment and then they realized, hey, we should totally be friends. Like, there's nothing wrong with us, like, not being allies to a certain degree. Chiaki showed Chiaki's back, which is all scaly and snake-like. Which kind of added to the fact that these aliens are bad, they're experimenting, they're, they're, they're up to no good whatsoever. And... Chiaki's backstory is actually rather sad. Chiaki and his three friends started a street band, or like a My Street Band, and they were pretty good. And then aliens came and ruined the day and captured all four of them. They experimented on all of them. Chiaki by far got out better than his friends. As far as what I was seeing, all of his friends got turned into ins insectoids, or some form of insectoid human. Chiaki basically got snake-like reflexes, got flexibility and range because of the fact that Chiaki kind of has that snake-like rhythm and like body stylization and form now. But Chiaki also got to see five silhouettes that I believe Ash probably already has a speculation video on, so I might not even cover them. But it looks really, really close to stuff we may have already have seen. Uh, I'm not even going to say, because I don't want to ruin a potential video if he has already done it. If not... If I see that he has not done it, I might do it myself. But, let's move on. Chiaki escapes from the UFO from the mothership by diving out of it. Which is a very gutsy move. Lands in the backyard of my second favorite, or third favorite character. You know him, you love him, is Nozuchika Mitsumatagi. The Y Mafia is great. And entirely great. We we have touching bro moments of them becoming friends. Uh, Chiaki freaking out mom because Chiaki has skills. I feel bad for Chiaki mama or Chiaki Okasan. But the Y Mafia basically decided how do we get into Y Gakuen or the Y Academy? We're, we're horrible at sports, but we're pretty decent at music, so let's go with that. And Jinpei is bawling his little eyes out, as always. We get a cute scene of Jinpei walking with Chiaki and our boy, Nozuchika. And basically talking about what friendship is, what otomodachi basically means, and then we pan over to whisper with Emma's bunny. Someone saved the bunny. Why does he have the bunny? The bunny is special. Keep the bunny away from that. 
that bad teacher. But the the student council in the Y Mafia confront Nayu, putting her in her place, kind of. Nayu basically enforced, this is going to be fun. I'm going to have fun dealing with you. Or something to that degree. But I think what's really going to happen is Nayu is going to hit a wall when it comes to all of this build up that's going on because the way I'm looking at things, Nayu doesn't really have much of an opportunity to fight back against two branches of power here. And if we add YSP into the mix, it doesn't matter if Nayu has like aliens on her side because Ronto is gathering forces. Ronto has two really strong people in Chiaki and Nozu Chika and like the rest of the Y Mafia. Then we have the student council that we still know basically nothing about because why, why has level 5 decided to stall out their development? I, I don't really know. And I'm saying stall out their development which refers to the character development themselves. Overall, this episode is one of the better ones, and I'm using that in the most general sense because we actually got some story that felt like it was worth having. We also got a battle that actually felt kind of fluid. I mean, there's some things that were a little bit clunky within this, just a little bit, not enough that a normal viewer would notice, but enough that someone who has an animation background would notice. It's nothing even that big. But, yeah, I just wanted to point that out because I... You always know there's one person that will take things to the limit on, like, commenting about, like, the sound design is wonky here. The animations are off. They miscolored it so-and-so short. Uh, it's like when, for I'm gonna use One Piece as a quick example. They scrutinized the manga chapter because there there was something wrong with someone's shirt. I can't remember what chapter because it did not matter to me. Because I thought, hey, this is just something different for this particular chapter. I'm I'm rolling with this. But I I just wanted to be open about some of these things that seem a little bit different or off because the pandemic is a thing. Steve Carino is one bad mamma jamma and he is causing issues worldwide. And if no one gets my what culture or Russellamia reference here, it's okay. I am 100% fine with it. This was a very good episode. Chiaki is very interesting. This does also bring the threat of the aliens kind of more to the forefront. Because up until this point of like these past two episodes, it's kind of felt like the plot wasn't real, really progressing much. Like we would have a plot progression episode, and then we would have a backpedal episode. Now the plot is basically front line and center. And we're moving into really confronting Nayu, or really having our first true encounter against Nayu. That is like a true encounter that is fleshed out. I still think that the series has a lot that it can really work off of, kind of modernizing the Yokai Watch franchise. Which I think is rather wise because there's they can reference back to stuff that occurs in Mythos for certain things within the yokai themselves that the yokai heroes are based off of. And since they're heroes and since Onryo are Onryo, they can even play off of some particular things that are going on in like the world of anime in games to a certain degree. I know I'm being like analytical about this, but I'm not going to dive any deeper. I'm just going to thank you guys for watching. And I just wanted to tell you all, I appreciate each and every one of you. Have a fantastic day. Bye-bye.